Are you confused about the course you are taking? Do you want to know if God is speaking to you right now? In this video, you'll see seven signs that God is saying, you are on the right path. You will understand what to do when you start sensing God's leading. You are about to see God turn your life around as He holds your hands and walks you through your journey. Before we proceed, if this is your first time on this channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell, and let's dive straight into God's Word for you. God created you with a purpose, and for every step you take toward that purpose, you must follow as He leads. God is a shepherd to all His children, keeping them out of harm's way and showing them the path to tread. He wants you to have the best of life and has committed to ensuring that you walk in His will for your life. God is always speaking to His children. He will not hold or keep secrets about anything vital for your advancement in life, including guidance. God wants to lead you on a path that ends in favor and honor because those who seek God will not lack anything. It is normal to sometimes feel uncertain about the steps to take. At such a crossroads, it is crucial that you make the right decisions. Your life can completely take a good turn just by your ability to choose the right things. Doesn't it feel good to have someone who can tell you exactly what you should do at every point? It not only takes the pressure of making important decisions off you but also helps you live a life of order and precision. Even when painful moments come, they leave you overwhelmed. You can be sure that you are still following the right path. This is how God leads. With His guidance, you never have to second-guess the steps you are taking or the seasons of your life. This is because His guidance keeps you at the center of His will for your life. Access to God's guidance does not require you to do anything out of the ordinary. As long as you are open to His leading and ready to do as He says, you will always find yourself on the right path. God leads in certain ways, and these mediums might be peculiar depending on individuals. Regardless of how He chooses to work with you, the result will be the same. God uses several signs to communicate that you are walking in His will. Let's get into the signs God uses to indicate that you are on the right path. 1. Trials and Hardship Tough times can be overwhelming and too much to handle. Although these adverse moments are not God's will for you, times will come when you cannot help but go through the motions. Just as there is a season for laughter and merriment, there is also a season for pain and struggle. When they come, God can take advantage of them to start a beautiful work in your life. He can use the pressures from these seasons to develop you as He takes you to the place where He wants you to function. Disappointments, failures, conflicts, and financial scarcity are not pleasant occurrences, but they can be a building process that gets you ready for the gifts that God wants to release to you. James 1, 2, 4 Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that testing your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. David's trials in the bushes were only stepping stones to the throne. As much as the set times can be challenging, if you submit to God, he can use them as a moment of great change in your life. Don't just look at the discomfort the hard times bring, see it as an opportunity for God to prune you. It's in these processes that God rids off your wrong character and tendencies. God will work on your ability to trust in Him when all else fails. He will work on your grip on material possessions and build in you a willing heart before Him. So the next time you face hard times, you can be sure that God is watching and using that moment to lead you to something greater. He knows how to make everything work for your good. And that includes even the bad moments. 2. Rejection This might not look like a clear sign of God telling you that you are walking in His will. But if you pay close attention, you will be able to read the writings on the wall. Rejection is when people might seem to not want you around them. It can be frustrating and hurtful when people push you away and devise plots just to rid you of. 
However, it might just be the push you need to move to the next place God wants for you. Jesus was rejected, but he was still on the right path. When his people dishonored and despised him, this made him redirect his focus to others whose hearts were open to him. They received the word. It is even now said that Jesus must have come for the Gentiles. Although he brought salvation for all, he first came to the Jews. When they did not acknowledge his presence, he changed his focus. Through this decision, many Christians in the world sprung up. Do you see how the rejection was a way that God the Father led Jesus to reach out to many others? God might need you to broaden your sphere of influence rather than narrow down and focus on just one area. So, every time you receive a rejection, don't always sink into the feeling that the disapprovals bring. Take time to check what God is saying. It might be his medium of helping you consider other options you did not initially observe. Another person who faced rejection was Joseph. Most of his brothers never liked him and because of that, they always treated him like an outsider. When an opportunity revealed itself for them to get rid of Joseph, they took it. He must have felt betrayed by their rejection. Only if he knew God was also using that ordeal to direct his path. Joseph's story is unique because he had to pass through places where he felt like he did not belong. First, it was his siblings. After that, he still faced another persecution in the house of Potiphar. The way God led Joseph was through disapproval from people. Notice that when it was time for Joseph to finally be where God needed him to be, he gained acceptance. But there is something to learn from Joseph. Even though he kept receiving rejection from people, he kept his composure. He had a heart that exuded honor before God. He was always willing to serve diligently, even as a servant in Potiphar's house. Anytime God is leading you through the way of service, you are on the right path. Before he made Joseph prime minister, he took him through a passage where he was bought to be a slave and a servant who had a master. Remember that although Joseph was meek and humble, he did not understand what it meant to serve others because he always got preferential treatment from his father. God knew that the office of governance was an office of servants, and for Joseph to be fully equipped to serve the people as prime minister, he had to learn service. His experiences were unpleasant but necessary for God's purpose in his life. So, whenever you feel set apart against your will by people, it might be God's way of calling you into his divine plan for you. When you start to feel secluded or rejected by a certain circle of friends, pause to reflect. Instead of trying to fight your way back into their good books, check if God is trying to say something to you through that rejection. Three. The place of isolation. This is a period where God separates you from the familiar. He takes you on a journey like a lone wolf. In times such as this, God will mostly ask you to leave certain people, locations, and habits to a place that is uncomfortable but required. Isolation is like a break before you continue with your journey. It is a resting place. So, while God calls you away from your busy schedules, friends, and loved ones, he works on your whole being. This is one way to know that you are traveling in God's will. Isolation is a place of transformation. It transforms you into a person better suited to the position God calls you to fill. The truth is, God only takes the people he wants to seriously work with through such moments. This is a time when God sets you apart to change something about your life. In isolation, God seeks to quiet your soul from the noise of the outside world. He wants to bring you to a place where he readjusts your focus back to himself. This also means that God is right there with you when you go through this period of waiting. Another thing that God does in isolation is to disconnect you from the wrong crowd. So you must understand that just because you are no longer in the face of people does not mean you are not fulfilling your purpose or doing the will of the Father. Remember, David was to be a king. Samuel had even anointed him as king when God rejected Saul. So you see that David was a king because God saw him as one. But he had to run into isolation at the cave of Elam. 
When God wants to work on you like David, he will drive you into isolation. David didn't just go there. He ran there because nowhere else was safe. He went into isolation in a cave called Adullam. Cave Adullam is known as a secret place. It was the place where he raised David to be a man of strength. Like David, he wants to build your listening ears. It was in a place of isolation that God worked on David's ability to hear and trust him. When everyone turned against him and he could no longer bank on anyone, he learned to trust God for everything from that moment on before he would go for any battle. Throughout the scriptures, you see how David inquired from God when his wife, children, and possessions were taken. This is remarkable, isn't it? If your loved ones went missing, the most logical thing you would do is go after them. David was not even an ordinary person. He was the king, and that meant he had battalions of soldiers who were armed and ready for battle at his command. David did not let his emotions or his position as a leader drive him into making a decision. 1 Samuel 30, 8, And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. He knew from the place of isolation how important God's voice was. 1 Samuel 23, For once again David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Calah, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. This was David inquiring again from God about something he had already received an answer to in verse 2. He wanted to be sure that he was going along with God's instructions. He had learned to depend on God. God also uses this season to build boldness in you. David had been on the run before now, looking for shelter and safety because he couldn't stand to face King Saul or anyone who was in alliance with him. Through the isolation season, God raised a different person. David became fearless. He was no longer running away into hiding. This time, he took the battle into the enemy's gate by God's guidance, and he won against them. God also reconnects you with destiny helpers in this moment of isolation to show that he is leading you on the right path. These people will be different in character from the ones he separated you from or asked you to pathways with. They will be people who can relate to your present struggles because God will also be doing the same work in their lives. In 1 Samuel 22, 1-2 Many people came to join David in Adullam. They were people who were in some kind of trouble, men who owed a lot of money, and men who were just not satisfied with life. They could relate to the phase of life that he was in because they were also being called into isolation. Mind you, not everyone who was in distress and discontented went to Adullam. There is something about the period of isolation. It is a place of grooming character building, and an exchange of identity. It might not have looked like God's leading when David ran into the caves of Adullam. But what happened to the man who went in and the one who came out can only be by God's orchestration. David left the isolation season as a leader of over 400 men. 4. A yearning for God. This is a strong passion to worship and reverence for God. This desire will be most times insatiable. You will just find yourself gravitating toward building fellowship with God. It is almost like a revival in your spirit. You will become awakened unto God and His kingdom. You will start to seek Him first, forgetting your needs and wants. In this moment, you will find it easy to spend time studying the Word of God. You will have a zeal to serve God in measures that spreads the gospel. It is through this passion that God knits his consciousness to the heart of men. Ezekiel 36, 26, 27, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. He uses this desire to guide you and keep you within his reach, in the center of his will. When you notice that God is calling you to a moment of quiet and oneness in His presence, He wants to talk to you and fellowship. Without a relationship with God, 
you cannot understand how he leads his children. And you might not even be sensitive when he decides to change course because your spirit is not alive to his will. This is a sign that God is asking you to go to a place of solitude. You can see that God might be ordering your steps in this very moment. He also tries to quiet the activities of your soul. If you observe the Holy Spirit instructing you to reduce certain activities like hanging out, TV time, and social media, He just wants to change your focus so He can feed your spirit. So, every time your heart starts to burn for God, it is a signal from God. Through what other means does God confirm to His children that they are on the right path? 5. Through the Word of God God's Word is the evergreen channel to knowing God's direction in any situation. The Word of God contains the mind of God. It contains everything you will ever need for a complete journey on earth. You can never miss your steps by paying heed to the Word of God. His Word is like a lamp to guide your steps and the light to illuminate your path. At each turn, there is a signal from the Word on what you should do. With the Word, you can never be confused. So whenever you find yourself drawn to the Word of God in a particular season, you can take that as a signal that God is calling you to a place of instructions. Every time you feed on the Word, you are doing God's will. The Word of God does not just contain instructions for living, it also carries God's voice. The voice of God provides direction to the right path. Isaiah 30, 21 says, You will hear a voice saying this is the way, walk therein. His word is a light unto my feet and a light into my path. The voice of God is potent. It can give you life. It carries a revitalizing energy because God's voice is the Spirit of God. Have you had seasons when you were failing in strength to handle a particular duty and suddenly got a word from God, and that was all it took for you to do a good job? That is the work of the voice of God on display. It is one of the signs that God is ordering your steps according to His will. The Bible says that God's words are spirit, and they are life. Whenever you hear God talk to you, either through prayers or your study of the word, you receive the power to become active. You are given a special grace to do what you find hard to carry out. Even in times of weakness, when you lack the strength to do what God wants you to do, the voice of God acts as a booster. It releases the energy to keep running. The voice of God is like a pep talk session. It encourages you before a win. The word of God is also the bank of prophecy. Whatever God says he will do always comes to pass. So, Every time you spend time with the Word, you are investing in your future through prophecies. As you study the Word, God's Spirit surges into you. It stirs you up to run in pursuit of your calling. The voice of God will always get you moving in the direction of God's purpose for your life. This is one definite sign that you are walking on the right path. The Holy Spirit also leads you, and whatever He tells you will align with the Word of God. The Holy Book is present for you when you need clarity in any area of your life. The Holy Spirit will not contradict what you read in the Bible. This is because He does not speak of Himself. He only communicates to you whatever the Father wills Him to. God will also never tell you to do anything that He has not commanded you to do in His Word. In the beginning, it was the Word, and this Word is God. And He lives by integrity. He holds a track record of faithfulness and keeping His Word. So any time you hear words that correlate with God's Word, you can take the cue as God's direction. When it is truly God speaking, it will align with His Word. Aside from receiving instructions on which way to go, the time that you spend with God's Word gives you an avenue to understand the voice of God. This is why you must not neglect the place of God's Word in your life's journey. 6. Peace of Mind God does not want you to be confused when He speaks. He also does not make mistakes when He wants to talk to you. This is why He will always keep repeating that same message, instruction, or encouragement over and over. The way through which He accomplishes this is through your peace. 
John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Through the help of the Holy Spirit in you, the fruit of peace acts as a signal for God's direction. He uses your peace to tell you when he wants you to take a route or halt movement. When he does not want you to take a certain step, a feeling of uneasiness that you can't quite shake up with comes up. You will have a sense that something is not okay with the decision. You might spend time planning for a trip, and a few days into your journey, you become restless about going. If it happens repeatedly, you must look out. God always uses your peace as a sign to either move or pause. God is the omniscient. He sees all and knows everything, including your future. He knows how the decisions you sometimes make in good spirits can harm you. He will not be a good father to allow you to walk into harm. So he will always warn you through your peace. At other times when you have a go signal, you will experience a stage of stillness in your heart. There will just be a knowing that you have God's permission to proceed. You just have to be sensitive to the way he speaks through your peace. 7. The Spirit of Faith As a believer, God stirs up the spirit of faith in your heart to make you remember his ability so that you can trust in him to perform everything he has spoken to you in his word. This faith makes you move with an unwavering belief that God can change that situation. A lot of times, when you face hard times and trials, having faith in God is not an easy thing to do. But when God needs you to hope in his capacity to transform that situation, he gives you the spirit of faith. You can take this as a signal to wait and not give up on your expectations. Faith will also encourage you to try again in any area where you have failed. Faith makes you bold enough to dare things that others are running away from. It enables you to stand strong in hope no matter how long it takes. Just like the case of Abraham, who is known as the father of faith. The angels spoke to him and told him that God would give Sarah a child. Abraham was able to wait on God till that word came to pass. He is helping you to stay in the place of waiting for the miracles he is bringing your way. This spirit of faith will also move you towards taking an action. You might start to self-develop in areas where God will eventually direct you to as your place of blessing if you find yourself building expertise, daring new spheres, and attempting to break certain records. God is directing. He wants to stir in you a hunger for growth and a distaste for complacency. This faith will drive you to dream big and build yourself. God needed Abraham to enlarge his mindset so that he could receive what God wanted to give him. Now that you understand the place of God's direction, you must pay attention to the signals and be sensitive. You must learn how to discern which of the signs God is using with you. Another thing you must do is to trust God for strength to go through every process he wants to take you on. Open yourself up to the Holy Spirit and submit to his guidance. Only then can you enjoy a smooth sailing. God will give you the answers that you seek. Now, let us pray. Father, I come before your throne today. I've come to worship the integrity of who you are. You have been so kind. I am living proof of your love for me. Thank you for always holding me with your arms of strength. Your invisible arm has held me all my days till this very moment. I am grateful that they have never been a mountain too high or a valley too low for you to reach out to me. Thank you for never letting go of me. You have been consistent in catering to my well-being. You are the one who shows me mercy. I am grateful, Lord. Thank you for your outstretched arm of love. I am so honored by how you have dealt with me. Thank you for loving me enough to talk to me, correct me, and hold my hand. I ask for your mercy if I have missed any season in your agenda for my life by not paying attention to your voice. I cannot lead my life, God, I surrender my existence to you, Jesus. Come take over the affairs of my life again. 
Please hold my hands and guide me in the path that leads to righteousness. I need you to help me let go of controlling and find ways to do things. Keep in stillness so that I can hear your voice. I ask that you restore the seasons I have missed, calling me to the right path. In moments of rejection and great trials, help me trust in you. Teach me to understand that you are always with me until the end of time. I trust your perfect will for me, Father. I believe that your intentions for me are God-given and reliable. Therefore, God, help me put my faith in you when you give me your instructions in love. I need your grace to work away from everyone that you want me to detach from. I ask that you grant me the spirit of discernment to know exactly what is in the heart of the Father for me at this moment. Help me easily understand the signals he shows me. Give me the strength to follow up the instructions you give me with prompt actions. I ask that you halt every plan of the enemy to distract me. Give me the wisdom to know exactly what you are saying at every point in time. Help me never to doubt your leadings but to trust you every hour. As I spend time in the study of your word, Lord, feed my heart. Grant me fresh insight from your wills. Reveal to me your desires for my life. Holy Spirit, I ask that you quicken me to remain committed to Jesus. Keep my gaze fixed on you, God. I know from now on I will be strengthened. I walk in the will of the Lord for my life. I become sensitive to the words of his heart. My actions go in line with his dictates for my life. Amen. I am sure that God has spoken to you through this video. Please hit the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Remember to leave a comment in the section provided. God bless you. See you in the next video.